the left ventricle creates the pressure gradient needed to move blood throughout the whole body to perfuse the body with oxygen and nutrients. The closer blood vessels are to the heart, the greater the pressure they have. The other way of saying that, the further away blood gets from the heart, the lower the pressure. So we have the highest pressure in the aorta immediately departing the hearts and the lowest pressure in the superior and inferior vena cava entering the heart. As we move along the cardiovascular system through arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, and veins, the system progressively loses pressure. And this is impactful, especially when we're trying to return blood to the heart via a low pressure system in the veins. So the body has mechanisms to maintain pressure in the venous end of the cardiovascular system to get blood back to the heart, mainly to get blood back to the heart when it's opposing gravity, such as in the appendages, mainly the legs, and the abdominal cavity, and really the inferior aspect of the thoracic cavity. And there are two mechanisms this is achieved. That is to say, two mechanisms that help to maintain or slightly increase pressure on the venous end of the cardiovascular system. One mechanism is the respiratory pump, which we'll discuss in the next video. The other system, which we'll discuss here, is the skeletal muscle pump. And the premise of the skeletal muscle pump is as follows. Blood vessels in the legs and to a certain degree in the arms run between and through and adjacent to skeletal muscle. When skeletal muscle contracts, such as when we are walking, it squeezes on these blood vessels. Squeezing on the blood vessels decreases the volume of the blood vessel, increases the pressure, allowing blood to flow. So as we see in this image right here in green, tunica intima, composed of endothelium. And within that endothelium, we have these valves that are created, somewhat akin to the semilunar valves of the pulmonary artery and the aorta. Blood flows from, say, the big toe to the heart. I tend to say the big toe just because that is the farthest away blood can be from the heart. And it's moving from the big toe all the way back up to the heart, opposing gravity. Now, keep in mind, I'm talking about in the legs at this moment. If that blood vessel is squeezed as we walk, our skeletal muscle and our legs contract, squeeze on these blood vessels, it's going to create a region of high pressure because the squeezing of the blood vessel decreases the volume in this area. Decreasing the volume increases the pressure. Now, blood has no concept of the direction it needs to go. It's going to act like any fluid that is experience, experiencing higher pressure. It is just going to move to an area of lower pressure. So theoretically, that blood could flow superiorly or inferiorly. But fortunately, there's these valves right here that when blood attempts to flow inferiorly, those valves are going to close and blood can only move superiorly. So the skeletal muscle pump is the contraction of skeletal muscle in the limbs, mainly the legs, that squeeze veins, decrease the volume of the veins, increases the pressure, pushes the blood, pushes the blood superiorly up towards the heart.